So now we have these basic, what we call parents, or we're just kind of building up our toolkit of different functions. So what we start out with is f of x is equal to x, the identity function. You get out whatever you put in. If your input is one, you get out one. If your input is zero, you get out zero, so on. You get out what you put in. Now for the different features of this function, let's take a look at first the domain. You can plug in any function into the domain. It goes all the way left and it goes all the way right. So it doesn't matter what you plug in, you're always gonna get something out. So the domain here is from negative infinity to positive infinity. It's all real numbers. And then for the range of this, well, you can get any number out. It goes all the way up forever and all the way down forever. If you want to get 10 million out, you just plug in 10 million. So the range for this is also negative infinity to positive infinity. Now for symmetry, we'll actually talk about this in the next video. So we'll put a pause on the symmetry ones. And then the extrema, the maxes and the mins or local maxes, local mins. There's actually no local maxes or local mins here because it, it goes up to infinity forever and it goes down to infin infinity forever. So there's no global maximums or minimums. And there's no bumps on this graph. There's no ups and downs. So there's no local max or mins. There's no tops of hills or bottom of valleys. So there's um, put NA. And then the behavior, is it increasing, decreasing? Well, it's actually increasing and it's always increasing. So it's increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now for the absolute value function, that is where it measures the distance a number is from zero. At the end of the day, what it does is it spits out positive numbers. So if you plug in negative one, you get positive one. Negative two, you get out positive two. You plug in one, you get out positive one, so on. So the domain of this, it's the same thing. You can plug in any number that you want and it will give you the output. So you can plug in all the way to negative infinity and to positive infinity. And the range, how low does this graph go? The absolute value function will never spit out negative numbers because it always makes numbers positive. So the range, the lowest it goes is zero and the highest it goes is infinity. So for infinity, we always use a parenthesis. For the zero here, it actually does have an output of zero. We can see there's a Y value and output of zero here. So we include zero, we use the bracket. Now for the extrema, maximums and minimums, this goes up forever, so there's no maximums and there's no bumpiness on it, there's no tops of hills, so no local maximums. But there is a local and a global minimum right here at this point. So let's say a global and local minimum at x equals zero. And then for the behavior, is it increasing, decreasing? Well, on this left-hand side here, if we follow it left to right, remember, even though the arrow, it looks like it's pointing up, we always follow left to right. So from left to right, this graph is decreasing and it starts all the way down to negative infinity. So it's I'm just gonna put a D to abbreviate. So it's decreasing from negative infinity all the way up to, well, zero. And for increasing, decreasing intervals, we always use the X values and we always use the parentheses. And now for increasing, it starts increasing up at zero and then it increases forever to infinity. For the squaring function, whatever you put in, you just square that number. You, we've already talked about this function before. The domain, you can get any, you can put any number into this function and then you'll be able to square it. So the domain here is from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, however, we can't get negative numbers out from squaring because a negative number times a negative number is positive. So it's kind of similar to the absolute value function. We're always gonna get positive or non-negative outputs. So the range here is from zero, we use a bracket because we can actually get the output of zero all the way up to infinity. And again, we'll talk about the symmetries on the next video. For extrema, same thing as the absolute value function. 
it goes up forever so there's no maximums and it has this local and global minimum right here so i'm going to say l and g min at x equals zero just abbreviating that a little bit so we don't have to write as much then the behavior we want to see where is it increasing where is it decreasing it's actually the same again as the absolute value function a lot of the characteristics of the squaring function are similar to the absolute value function it's decreasing if we look to the left if we follow the graph left to right and trace along the line our pen our pencil is going down so it's decreasing all the way from negative infinity to zero and then it's increasing from starting back up at zero and going up to infinity now the square root function when we look at the table here if you try to plug this into your calculator the square root of negative one see square root of negative one it's undefined or we get an error or no solution depends on the calculator that you use so what that means is that we can't plug in those negative numbers because a square root is asking the question what number times itself will give you x well you can't take a number times itself to give you a negative value so we can only plug in non-negative values so zero and all the positive values so the domain here is from zero and we can actually include zero all the way to positive infinity you can plug in any positive number and then the range is actually the same thing the lowest it goes is zero and the highest it goes is infinity it takes a while to get to infinity because it's a pretty slow growing function but you can get infinitely big here for the extrema we do technically have an extrema right here at zero so this is both a local and global minimum at x equals zero again because it's the lowest point on the graph and it is the lowest point relative to the terms around it there's no points to the left here but it's still lower than all the points around it and the behavior it's always increasing from zero to infinity now for the next ones again we're going to skip the symmetry parts for the next video the cubing function so whatever you plug in you just cube it multiply it by itself three times the domain here you can cube any number you can multiply any number by itself three times so the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity same with the range you can get any number out negative infinity to positive infinity extrema there's no tops of hills bottom of the valleys it goes up forever it goes down forever so there's no global maximums or minimums so there's none here um, so let's say n a not applicable and the behavior it's actually always increasing if we follow the graph left to right the pen or pencil is always going up so this is always increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity and then the cube root function it, very similar to the cubing function but it's just flat on its side and essentially what it's saying it's like the square root function but you ask yourself for whatever you plug in for x say it's eight you say what number times itself three times will give you eight well that's two that's why for the input of eight you have an output of two and if you look at these two tables they're very similar to each other they're actually just flipped right the inputs became the outputs and this is actually a topic that we'll talk about in the near future so the domain here you can get the cube root of any number so the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity and similarly you can get any number out as a cube root so from negative infinity to positive infinity there's no local maximums or minimums because there's no hills or valleys and this goes up and down the range is negative infinity to positive infinity so there's no global extrema so there's no extrema whatsoever and this one is also always increasing if you follow the graph from left to right it's always going up at different rates but still always increasing so from negative infinity to positive infinity 
Now the reciprocal function, which means you put a number in and you just turn it into a fraction or into the denominator of a fraction. So if you put whole numbers in or integers in, you're just gonna have one divided by that integer. If you put fractions in, it flips the fraction. So if you plug in negative one half, you flip the fraction so it's negative two over one or just negative two. And we can even put that in the calculator for unsure of that math. We can say one divided by, it's gonna look a little funky here, and I'll put in parentheses, move the arrow. So if we do one divided by one half, well, it's actually two, or even one divided by negative one half, that's negative two. So what it does is it just flips the fraction. So the domain here, we can plug in almost any number. The thing that we have to be careful about, there's a number that we're not allowed to divide by. And you might be thinking of that in your head and, and heard that before. We can never divide by zero. We'll get an error out. See in the calculator, if we delete this part and we put zero in the denominator, that's also undefined. We cannot divide by zero. So the domain is pretty much everything but zero. So the way you write that is we go from negative infinity all the way up to zero. We don't include a zero, so we use a parenthesis. Remember the parentheses mean don't include that number. And then we use that union symbol that we talked about. And then we start back up from zero all the way up to positive infinity. So I know it looks like, well, you just wrote all the numbers. We wrote all the numbers, but we said don't include zero. And that's kind of what this graph is doing, right? This first interval that we wrote negative infinity to zero, that's this bottom half. And then from zero to infinity, that's that top right half. So the range, it's actually the same thing. It goes down to infinity and it goes up to infinity, but it makes this little gap at zero. So the range is going to be the same thing from negative infinity to zero, union, zero to infinity. And again, we'll talk about symmetry in the next video. Now the extrema, maximums and minimums, there's no maximums or minimums here because it goes up forever and it goes down forever, so no global max or mins, and there's no bumpiness to this, so there's no local maximums or minimums or tops of hills, bottoms of valleys, so there's none, not applicable. The behavior, let's see, if we go from left to right, we go follow along here, so from negative infinity, this is going down, okay, so from, it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero. And then what is it doing back up again? So this is technically just right after zero, it picks back up and follow left to right, well, it's also going down. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero, but then also from zero to infinity. So this function's always decreasing. I know it looks weird because it jumps up and then it decreases some more but it jumps up at that gap at zero. So then the reciprocal squared function, it's very similar to the reciprocal function, but you're just squaring the denominator. So it's a little bit steeper, right? You are squaring numbers now, and then you're also, when you square numbers, you make them positive. So if you put in a negative number, you get out positive answers. So the domain, is gonna be the same exact thing from negative infinity to zero because we still cannot plug in zero into here because we'd have zero in the denominator and we cannot divide by zero. So union, start back up at zero to positive infinity. The range is where it differs from the original reciprocal function. We're going from now the lowest we go is zero and the highest we go is all the way up to infinity. And then the extrema, there's no minimums or maximums, no tops of hills, bottoms of valleys, so this is not applicable. And the behavior, let's see what it's doing. So from left to right, okay, that's increasing. So it's increasing from negative infinity all the way up to zero. And then what does it do on the second part? Well, if we follow along, and that's starting technically at right after zero, and the graph is going down, so it's decreasing from zero to infinity. So the next one is the constant function, which the constant function, when what it looks like is f of x is equal to c. c is just 
some number or any number. So that's kind of the form of the function. An example of that, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on if we have an example. Let's say we have an example of three. So fx is equal to three. Notice here there's no x value. There's no input. So this function doesn't take in account the input. It doesn't take in account the x value. So you could plug in any number you want and the output is always going to be three. You plug in zero and the output is three. Plug in one, the output is three. Plug in negative one, the output is three. The output will always be three, no matter what the input is doing. So the way that this looks, let's plot some of these points, you might get a feel for what it looks like. So in the middle, we have the point zero, three. So zero, one, two, three. We have the point one, three, that's one, three. Negative one, three. You're kind of getting an idea, maybe a couple more, two, three, negative two, three. So this is just a straight line at the height of three here. So let's describe some of the features or characteristics of the function. The domain, it doesn't matter what we plug in. We can use any number as the input because the output's always gonna be three. It's gonna go left and right forever. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, however, the range is only one value. The only output is three. So because this is a discrete range, it's not continuous, it's not over an interval, we use the squiggly brackets and just say three. So it's saying it's just that number three. And then symmetry, again, we'll talk about later. The extrema, it depends on who you ask, but you can either say it's not applicable or you could say three is the max or min. I think for our class, it's just best to say that there's no extrema rather than say three is both the minimum and the maximum. Uh, the behavior, it's constant. And it's constant always. So from negative infinity to positive infinity. So you might ask, why is it called the constant function? Well, it's called the constant function because it's constantly three. It's always three. Uh, it never changes. It's constantly three. Or C. It can be any number. In our case, it was three. So if we look at f of x equals negative two, let's see what that looks like. We have our plane here, and then we graph negative two. We just go to that height of negative two, and that's our line right there, f of x is equal to negative two. It's just below the x-axis. But if we have f of x is equal to zero, that's a constant function. And in fact, the, it's a constant function where the line is actually on the x-axis because that's the height of zero. So it's kind of hard to see, but it's on top of the x-axis. So you might ask, how do you recognize a constant function versus a linear function? Because they do look similar. You can recognize constant functions because they're just flat, horizontal lines. Now it's very likely that you have seen some of the, these functions that we've talked about so far. These ones here may or may not be new to you. And uh, we'll actually spend some time talking about these in the future, but for now, let's just see if we can look at a graph and determine the key features of the graph without necessarily knowing exactly what it does. We can maybe take guesses for what the exponential function does. We have two to the power of x. So the input are different powers of x, where you have two as the base. So you do two to the power of, plug in zero. Well, two to the zero is one. If you do two to the power of input is one, that's two to the one. Two to the power of two, if the input is two, that's four two to the power of three, that's eight, so on. And then you get the negative numbers and it turns into fractions. So let's talk about the domain here. You can plug in any number as the exponent, as the power. So it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then for the range, we can't get zero out. We can't actually, in fact, we can't get zero or less than zero out. There's no way to get negative numbers as an output here. Because if we plug in negative numbers in as our inputs, 
we'll still get positive numbers out. So the range here is not including zero, so parentheses, all the way up to, it goes up to infinity. And we'll talk about the symmetries later. And the extrema, there's none here because there's no maximums or minimum values. And the behavior, it's actually always increasing. If you follow from left to right, it's increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then for this other function, it's called a logarithmic function. You may have heard that word before, especially in the COVID era, talking about logarithmic growth or logarithmic virus infections. But this one, we will also focus on more into the future, but it's very similar to the exponential. They're sort of mirrors in a way. Um, the domain of this, it kind of siphons off. It has this asymptote, we call it, at zero. So it doesn't cross that y-axis right there. So it goes from zero all the way up to infinity. And then the range, it goes down forever, but also technically goes up forever. So the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And extrema, just like the exponential, there's none. And then the behavior, this is also always increasing, right? If we start from to the left here, technically right after is the start of zero, you follow the graph, we are going up. The graph is going up from left to right. So this is increasing from zero to infinity. And that's all of our parent or toolkit functions. Now we have a much larger range of functions to call upon when we are analyzing functions.